The subject of today's video is achieving proper trim with back mount doubles. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. An important technical diving skill and one with which many new technical divers have difficulty with is achieving proper horizontal trim. In order to achieve proper trim, we are first going to discuss what trim is determined by. These are your center of gravity and your center of lift. For technical diving, your center of gravity will be determined by the position and degree of all of your negatively buoyant components. These include things such as negative tanks, weights, and back plates. Similarly, your center of lift is going to be dependent upon the position and degree of all your positively buoyant components. These can include your wetsuit or dry suit and your wing. To achieve good horizontal trim, you must balance your centers of gravity and lift. If you are not balanced for horizontal trim, you will be fighting physics and you can't fight physics much. There are actually many different techniques to adjust trim. We're going to categorize them as being either dynamic or static approaches. Dynamic approaches include limb positioning, in particular, your arms and legs. If you have particularly heavy fins, or you dive with a self-contained can light, limb positioning can be a very effective way of dynamically adjusting your trim. Another dynamic approach is to manage the air bubble in your wing by temporarily changing your body position you can move gas to either the front or rear of your wing there are many different static approaches to achieving proper trim we will be discussing the following techniques one of the common techniques frequently attempted by new technical divers is to change the position of the band and studs on the twin set. This is generally a bad idea if you ever have to rent tanks somewhere else. The people who you are renting the tanks from will not necessarily allow you to change the position of the bands. In some cases, the studs might actually be too corroded to be able to loosen and move. It is standard practice to keep the top band at the crown of the tank and of course keep the lower band at an 11 inch spacing. I have chosen to illustrate a set of AL80 tanks as this type of configuration, this type of tank is the one that is most commonly available for rent uh, around the world. The second static technique for achieving proper trim is to position the wing on the tank studs in different positions. Most wings have several sets of grommets that can be used to adjust the wing position. A next static technique is to place the plate on the tank studs in different positions. Most plates usually have multiple sets of mounting holes to position the plate on the studs. And of course, there are a lot of different weight systems that can be used to achieve proper trim. There is a separate video on the Dive Zone Scuba channel that discusses the different types of weight systems in detail. Next, let's take a look at how all these different approaches work together. Let's start with the diver. Most divers center of gravity is above their waist and they'll be wearing a plate and harness. And the important thing to look at here is that the plate 
is in a fixed position on the diver and generally cannot be adjusted. First, let's address a positive trim problem. This is when the position of the diver in the water is with their head being too high and their feet being too low. To correct the positive trim problem, we need to move the center of gravity forward or toward the diver's head, and we need to move the center of lift aft or toward the diver's feet. In order to correct the positive trim problem, we can use any one of these possibilities or all of them together. So the first one is to use a higher set of plate holes. What this is going to do is it's going to move the negative tanks forward, or we could also use a higher set of wind grommets. This will have the effect of moving the positively buoyant wing aft. Lastly, we can also move the weights higher on the diver's body. Note that the tanks and the wing actually go in opposite directions relative to the diver and the plate. This is a concept that sometimes confuses new technical divers. Now, let's take a look at the negative trim problem. This is where the diver's head is too low and the feet are too high. With a negative trim problem, we need to move the center of gravity aft, and we need to move the center of lift forward. To correct a negative trim problem, we can use a lower set of plate holes, which has the effect of moving the negative tanks aft. We can also use a lower set of wing grommets, which results in moving the positive wing forward or we could also move some weights aft. Once again, the tanks and wing go in opposite directions relative to the diver and the plate. There is also the issue of changing buoyancy over the course of the dive. Over the dive, tanks will generally become more buoyant and it is also possible that they may move the position of the center of gravity if they're still negative, as in the case of steel tanks, or the center of lift in the case of aluminum tanks. These changes in buoyancy can be compensated for through the use of dynamic techniques. Another technique to address the change in buoyancy is to start the dive in a slightly positive trim. Over the course of the dive, as the tanks change in buoyancy, the diver approaches neutral trim at the end of the dive. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching.